breaking tonight, two weeks before vital midterm elections in which Democrats have threatened all-out assault on our democracy if they win just two more seats in the Senate. This person, Liz Cheney, chooses this moment to launch one of the most dishonest, disreputable political attacks I've ever seen on her own party. Evening, everyone. Welcome to The Next Revolution. We are pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community, and especially pro-America. Just a few weeks ago, Kamala Harris made it clear with those two extra Senate seats, they will abolish the filibuster to pass their corrupt anti-democracy bill designed to rig elections forever in their favor. You'd think the people who lecture us endlessly about threats to our democracy might focus on that. Especially when they're Republicans, you'd think they might just put aside any personal vendettas for maybe you know, five minutes to, you know, try and support GOP candidates. But, oh, no, not Liz Cheney. Instead, she tries to undermine Republicans in the most disgraceful way. The idea that somehow the party is now no longer going to support the Ukrainian people, which, you know, for somebody who has a picture of Ronald Reagan on the, the wall of his office in the Capitol, uh, the notion that now Kevin McCarthy is going to make himself the leader of the pro-Putin wing of my party is just a stunning thing. Uh, it's dangerous. So what exactly did Kevin McCarthy say to deserve that smear? Here's the quote. I think people are going to be sitting in a recession and they're not going to write a blank check to Ukraine. Ukraine is important. But at the same time, it can't be the only thing they do, and it can't be a blank check. What do you think? Maybe 90, 95 percent of Americans would agree with that? You know who definitely would agree with that? Victoria Spartz, our first ever Ukrainian-born member of Congress, who we welcomed here on this show repeatedly in the early days of the war as we made the case for standing up to Putin's aggression. Of course we should support Ukraine, but of course it shouldn't be a blank check. The only people in America who do want a blank check, and as big as possible, are the corrupt arms dealers in the military-industrial complex, including, let's remember, Liz Cheney herself, through her father's giant defense contractor, Halliburton. How can we possibly hope to have a reasonable, respectful conversation about politics and policy in this country when a perfectly legitimate point about making sure taxpayer money is carefully spent is turned into accusations of being pro-Putin? It is cheap, cynical, unintelligent and un-American. Liz Cheney invokes Reagan. My God, I'm just reading a book of his letters. He would never speak about fellow Republicans like she does. He would never distort and misrepresent someone's position like she does. The elections are just around the corner. Has Liz Cheney even read what the Democrats are planning to do to our democracy if they get those two Senate seats? Every Republican should be focused on that, especially in the two critical states Georgia and Pennsylvania. Sometimes it seems as if all anyone in the media wants to talk about is personal gossip. Well, we did a little digging into policy. On the page that Raphael Warnock puts up to beg for money, he says, I'm the son of a Georgia preacher who's committed my life to service. Oh, really? Looks to us like he's actually committing his life to serving the people who've been doing their best to destroy your kid's life, the teacher unions. Because Warnock has taken more money from teacher unions than any other member of Congress or candidate for Congress. Just think about that. How bad do you have to be with all the far-left Democrats to choose from? Bernie, AOC, all the corrupt machine politicians to choose from? Pelosi, Schumer? No, the one guy that the people behind closing schools, masking kids, indoctrinating kids, prematurely sexualizing kids, the one guy that those people love more than any other is Raphael Warnock. Maybe they love his lying. Last year, Warnock claimed that he's never taken, quote, a dime of corporate PAC money, period. What? His actual records show that he took $486,000 from corporate interests that same year. So, yeah, he didn't take a dime. He took over 4.8 million of them. And guess which other beauties have been pouring their cash into Warnock's coffers? Of course, you know who, George Soros and his son, Alexander. And you know why the pro-crime billionaire money goes to Warnock? Here's what he thinks of the police. Police power showing up in a kind of gangster and thug mentality. You know, you, don't have, you, you can wear all kinds of colors and be a thug. You can sometimes wear the colors of the state and behave like a thug. We shouldn't be surprised when we see police officers act like bullies on the street. 
gangsters, thugs, bullies. That's what he's calling police officers. Not the criminals wrecking our communities, but police officers. As far as I'm concerned, that alone is disqualifying. As is the disgracefully pro-crime policy record of the Pennsylvania Democrat, John Fetterman. As lieutenant governor, he leads the Board of Pardons, where he's recommended commutation 46 times, more than 10 times the average amount of passports. Unbelievably, of those 46 commutations, 13 were convicted murderers. And many times, Fetterman was the only vote to release these criminals. He voted to release John Brookins, who murdered a 58-year-old woman with a pair of scissors. Charles Goldblum, who murdered a man with a pair of garden shears after stabbing him 26 times. Fetterman actually voted to release Alex Rodriguez, who beat a 17-year-old to death with a baseball bat. Fetterman's justification added insult to injury. Quote, the perfect metaphor is the Shawshank Redemption. I've asked people, would you want Morgan Freeman to die in prison or not? What are you talking about? This isn't the movies. It's real life. It's real families who will never see their loved ones ever again. It's real parents who lost their 17-year-old son. And you want his killer to be out on the streets because it's like Morgan Freeman in the Shawshank Redemption. This appalling man must never be allowed anywhere near public office again. Yet he wants to be in the United States Senate. Send me to Washington, D.C. <laughs> Take on to make sure I push back against work to work. What? How did this joke of a candidate even get this far? These elections are absolutely vital. It is obvious now that the Democrats have been completely captured by their far-left activist base. Look how much damage they've done in just two years. The crime, the chaos on our streets at the border, inflation out of control, the energy independence we had just thrown away, the massive increases in real earnings, all just a memory now. This far-left Democrat experiment deserves a complete repudiation. They have to get the message loud and clear. Enough! With this extremism, no more ideology. We want practical, common-sense policies that make people's lives better. And the media Liz Cheney complex needs to get the message too. We reject your divisive, out-of-touch nonsense. We want politicians to focus on solving our problems, not pursuing their grudges. Tell us what you think at Next Rev FNC and at Steve Hilton X. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.